Cooking Channel. I'm Darren, and today I'm going to do something a little different. Um, I'm going to make something called pork bombs, um, pork bomb style. They're a little bit different than uh, pulled pork, but um, they're actually pretty delicious. It's a certain way to making uh, like a pulled pork uh, that um, I learned from Chef Eric Gephardt, who is the uh, culinary uh, liaison or expert for Kamado Joe brand ceramic grills. And if you follow along with any of the uh, uh, Kamado Joe cooking channel or any of the uh, his, his videos, you'll know what these are. Except I'm going to do a, my take on them. Um, and what it is, is it's, it's actually pulled pork. But what you do is you cook the pork in the smoker first. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to cook the pork in the smoker with rub on it till it gets up to about 160, which is usually the time where the stall uh, happens. If you used to smoking pork or brisket on a regular basis, you know what the stall is. It, you know, it hits a certain temperature and it stops there for a couple hours while the, uh, you know, the meat's starting to uh, sweat out the moisture and, and uh, you know, start to break down a little bit more. So it kind of hits a certain temperature like right around 160 or so, and then it stops for a couple hours until the temperature of the meat starts going back up. But what we're going to do is we're going to cook the meat on the smoker until it reaches around 160, close to it. It doesn't have to be exact. But what we're trying to do is form a really good bark on the outside. We don't want it to dry out too much or too much of the fat to render. But we do want to get a nice uh, bark on it and get some smoke to it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to wrap it really tight in a lot of plastic wrap and then we're going to throw it in a vacuum bag and then we're going to sous vide it at a higher temperature around 185 or 190 for about five or six eight hours and what that's going to do it's going to cook it kind of like confit where it's going to let the pork uh, cook and render all that fat and the, and the meat is going to cook in the fat instead of you know, getting out into the bag or um, out on the grill if you're cooking it normally. So what it's going to do is going to let that cook, you know, the pork just marinate and cook in its own fat and juices and spices that we have in there. And when we're done, it's going to come out to be the most juiciest, tender, amazing flavor that you could ever cook pork at. Believe me, you're going to have to try this. The spices I'm going to use today are a little bit different. I'm not going to use a basic, um, you know, everyday pork rub. I'm going to try something a little different because I want it to be a little bit more savory. I don't want it to be too sweet. So I'm going to use some of the Running Wild Smoky Paprika, which that does have a little bit of brown sugar in it, but it's, it's not overly sweet. It's not like the pork candy or the pecan butter or uh, any really heavy sugar-based pork rub. So it's just got a hint of it in there. I'm going to use some garlic powder or granulated garlic and some of the Running Wild Lemon Pepper and kosher salt and that's all I'm going to do to uh, as far as seasoning it goes and then like I said what we're going to do is I'm going to take it out of these packets I'm going to cut it up into some smaller pieces I don't want to have to use the whole big butt um, to wrap when I'm wrapping them in the full in the uh, plastic wrap later on so I'm going to uh, cut them up probably these are two bone in uh, pork butts so I'll probably cut it into about uh, four pieces for each one, so about eight pieces, you know, maybe a little bit less. But I just want it you know, to where I can handle it when I'm going to be taking these off the smoker and wrapping them in the plastic wrap. So follow along with me, guys. This is going to be an interesting cook. You've probably never seen it you know, very often <laughs> on YouTube. So I will be back after I get these all washed up and cut hey, it all on back. Um, so I got these all washed up, taken out of the package. And what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to cut most of the fat cap off because since we are going to be wrapping these really tight up in uh, plastic wrap and cooking them and finishing them that way where they're going to cook in their own fat, there's enough fat marbled in these pork butts that I don't need this fat cap on there. Plus it's going to help create more of a bark and smoke. It's going to attach more. So I'm going to go ahead and trim these up really good and I'm going to cut them up into pieces and cut that bone out. So I'm not going to bore you with doing all that, but just wanted to tell you what I was going to do. I'm going to trim all, most of this outer fat cap off and most of the out, outer fat, and then we're just going to end up with a few big Here's chunks. what I'm going to be doing now. I cut the uh, 
pork butts. I got about six pieces here, and uh, I'm not going to need both full pork butts, so I actually just took one of the pieces here, and I left the bone in it. And this is this will be a dinner for us um, somewhere down the line. Um, I'll just cook that up by itself. That's about you know three pounds of pork roast. I can do at a later date, but since I don't need all of it. I'm just going to cut it up into six pieces. And if you can see here, I've got it all pretty much about the same size. And then what we're going to do now is um, just rub it, put some rub on it, and we're going to go ahead and throw it on the smoker. I got the smoker heating up. All right, guys, I'm, my fire is going pretty good. And I'm going to throw in a couple chunks of apple wood. I don't want anything that's going to be too strong like oak or hickory since I'm doing a savory uh, pork so I'm just throwing a couple chunks of applewood in applewood's kind of mild and has a distinct uh, distinct uh, taste to it all right the uh, temp's real stable there it's right about 235 and like I said it doesn't have to be exact Anywhere between 225 to 270 or so is going to be good for me. So I'm going to go ahead and throw these uh, pork butts on. Smoke's rolling, as you can see. I'm going to go ahead and make sure I can kind of mop up any of the rub that's still left on this pan. And like I said, we're, all we're doing with these is just going to get them up to 160 or so internal, right, a, right about when the stall starts, so that we can uh, get a nice bark, a nice smoke to these. This came in from, out from inside, so, yeah, they're really close to 160. Like 157 on that one. That one's a little over 160. This thick one. It's a little over 154. Yeah, they're close enough. So I'm going to go ahead and okay. pull them. I pulled them off the um, grill. They were probing right about. Some of them are right around 155, some of them are right or closer to 160, but um, I found the easiest way to do this, guys, because now I'm going to wrap these in, in the plastic wrap, is to take your cutting board and take one sheet out and spread it out, and then take, your one, take one of your pieces that you're going to wrap, just put it right in the middle. You're going to start with one, and then we're going to take them, and then we're going to actually take the roll and just we're going to wrap it really really tight so if you start by doing it with one sheet getting it as tight as you can on there then we're going to take it over here and, and wrap them one at a time so these are still a little bit warm um, usually I let them co uh, cool off just a little bit more but I'm just going to do this one just kind of show you how we do it so and like I said the reason we're going to do it this way is so that this pork it's got a lot of smoke to it now. It's got all that rub on there. It's got the nice bark. It's going to cook in its own fat and juices for the rest of the cook. And like I said, we're going to cook them hotter than we normally would sous vide. It's going to be around 185 to 190 for about eight or nine hours. And we're going to cook those in the morning. And what that's going to do is these are going to be wrapped tight and they're going to be just cooking in their own juices. They're not going to, it's not going to be drying out at all. It's not going to be uh, dripping out into the bottom of a smoker. It's not going to be spreading out into the bag. These are going to be wrapped up tight, and it's going to be just sitting in its own juices and cooking. So, so I usually just take this one sheet and wrap it as tight as I can around it, just so I can have something to start with. And then just go ahead and grab your plastic wrap from the box and just start it again with a piece on here. over here and you just make it tight tight as you can and we're just gonna wrap it hold it tight and kind of turn it while you're wrapping and just kind of pull it because you want it tight you don't want this to leak out you don't want to open up your vacuum bag 
and then have all kinds of fat in there. So you want this as tight as you can get it. So like I said, while you're twisting it, just pull it tight so that we don't have any fat leaking out. And just wrap as much as you can. You know, it doesn't, it's not going to hurt it. Plastic wrap is cheap compared to vacuum bags, so you're really just wanting to have this as tight as possible. Just gonna keep pulling it, tightening it down. I usually do about five or six, at least five or six uh, layers here. Because, like I said, you want it as tight as possible. You don't want any of that fat coming out. You want it to all stay in this little pack. And that's about it. That should do us just fine. Just tighten it up and just go around and just kind of make it into it like you're making a snowball. Just kind of make sure most of the air is squeezed out of it. And that's it. And we're going to do the rest of these just like this. And when we're done wrapping them tight in this uh, uh, plastic wrap, we're going to stick them in a vacuum bag. And then we're going to put them in the refrigerator till the morning. Then we'll throw them in the sea. guys, I am... Getting my sous vide up and running. It's uh, I'm cooking the cooler today because I'm going to be cooking hotter and a little longer, so I don't want the uh, the water to uh, evaporate too much. And I want it to uh, have the uh, insulation of the cooler to keep the water at the temp. So this should be up to temp in about a couple minutes. I'm going to go ahead and throw these in. So I'll be right back. out and uh, everybody's kind of on their way over so I'm going to go ahead and shut this off and we're going to go ahead and pull this out see that the pork is just kind of floating there but it's ready to come out and we're going to go ahead and pull this all out and I'll bring it inside and show you why it's called a pork bomb. All right, right guys, back. I'm going to show you why this is called a pork bomb. These are all done. They're ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and open up the vacuum bag. As you can tell, there's a little, little fat in here, but it's not a lot. Very little. It's all kind of stayed inside the plastic pouch here. Normally what you do with these is you'll make individual size portions about the size of your fist and wrap them up individually. And then when you serve them, you put them on the plate and you have your guest just kind of cut into them like this. It's going to cut all the way down the middle here. And then you open it up. And then the pork itself just kind of pulls and falls apart right on top of the potatoes or whatever you're serving it with. It's just all just kind of pulls right apart with all the juices go right on top of potatoes or noodles or whatever you're serving it with. But as you can see, we got a good uh, little bit of a smoke ring on there, but as you can tell, it just falls right apart and it's just been cooked so perfect in its own juices. So I'm going to take a bite here. Mm-mm-mm. Mm. So good. Hey Keith, you want to come over and take a bite? I'd love to try a bite. This is my uh, brother-in-law. Keith's going to take a bite of it, even though you won't see him. You'll listen to him. How is it? Juicy. Wow, the flavor is awesome. It's very tender too. Yeah, that's it. These are juicy, tender, cooked in their own wow. juices for over nine nine hours. So. All right, guys. 
thanks for joining us. You should try these out. Make sure you follow us on Facebook. Go ahead and follow us on Instagram. Like this video and please subscribe and follow us for more uh, videos down the road.